and welcome to the December 10th, 2018 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lorraine, could you please call the roll? Cody Fellows. Here. Roger Bealey. Here. Nicholas McGee. Here. Richard Duperry. Here. Rachel Hendricks. Here. Robin Sanders. Here. Okay. Thank you. A couple quick housekeeping items. Um, item number four, uh, minutes will be tabled to the next meeting. Uh, we don't have those quite yet. Uh, and then item number 10, Infinity Credit Union, was tabled at the request of the applicant. Moving on to number five, Sonnenschein Realty LLC requests a site plan amendment review for 9 U.S. Route 1, Portland Volvo, Assessor's Map U50, Lot 18A. Jamel, do you have an introduction to this? I do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this is a minor amendment to a recently approved site plan at the Portland Volvo site on, at 9 U.S. Route 1. The property is located in the Business Office Research Zoning District, uh, located on Route 1 close to the South Portland city line. The applicant is proposing to install storm drain pipes and drainage structures in an existing open drainage ditch to create a closed drainage system. The drainage infrastructure will be covered with gravel and the space is proposed to be used as, temp as temporary parking for construction vehicles on site. At the conclusion of construction, the area will be loam and seeded. Uh, given that this area on the property fronts uh, Route 1, staff recommends that the applicant enhance the streetscape in this area. Staff would also like to note that the applicant uh, did provide the requested stormwater calculations and staff is satisfied with these materials. Uh, so staff has prepared a draft motion with conditions uh, for the board to consider tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Jamal. And I'll turn over to the applicant. Sure. Thank you very much. My name is Kylie Mason. I'm also here with Dale Akeley uh, representing the owner. Um, I do have a very exciting rendering to share with you. Um, so just a small area of green space. We have added the three trees in the rendering. We're, we're happy to submit those um, if, the, if the board would like us to do so through staff. Um, but we're happy to add them. Um, we do have some preliminary comments back from DOT. They seem really okay with everything we're doing. We are looking at the um, potential sizing impacts should an office park be developed on the other side of Route 1 um, just to make sure the sizing is big enough to accept increase in flow. So with that, that's really the, the crux. We're taking this drainage channel, we're putting it in a pipe, everything will remain the same otherwise with the exception of this green area on top of it now. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, before we go to the board, we do have the opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone who'd like to speak on this, come on up. All right, seeing none. Um, do we have any board comments or questions at this point? Robin? Yes, Rachel? Rick? Okay. Through all the R's there. Roger? Uh, just, just to uh, inquire about the, um, the trees along the Route 1. Do you sure. have any comments regarding that? Do I have any comments? Yeah. Your reaction to, to staff notes? Oh, I thought it was fine. Uh, to add the three trees? To add three trees to the site? Oh, plan? okay. I'm sorry. I missed it. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that's great. We're happy to add three trees. Okay. Okay. I'm fine then. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add either. Uh, this is fairly minor. We actually, we had these materials and reviewed these before the prior meeting and it ended up getting tabled due to time. So I think we've, we've all vetted this one pretty, pretty thoroughly at this point. Um, I appreciate the applicant's responsiveness on the street trees and oh, sure. other items that were noted. Um, so as staff noted, we do have a, a, a draft motion here that I, uh, for our consideration that I will put forward now. Uh, I move to approve the site plan amendment project titled, the project titled Portland Volvo, proposed by Sonnenschein Realty LLC, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics, dated October 29th, 2018. The applicant is proposing to install storm drain pipes and drainage structures in an existing open drainage ditch to create a closed drainage system. Conditions. Number one, the drainage infrastructure may be covered with gravel and the space utilized as temporary parking for construction vehicles on the site. The site is to be restored in accordance with approved plans prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Number two, 
prior to the issuance of a building permit, the plan set shall be revised to include A, the addition of several deciduous trees along the Route 1 street frontage once construction is completed and the area has been loamed and seeded. B, a plan note on the overall grading plan, sheet 7 of 18, stating that the maintenance and replacement responsibility of the closed stormwater system shown within the storm drain easement is the sole responsibility of the owner and future owners of the property. C, an updated construction phasing plan for the project that includes information about how this portion of the property will be used during construction. Condition number three, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, edit the updated easement deed as suggested by the town's attorney, and B, provide documentation from the main DOT stating that they approve the applicant's request to modify and extend the existing drainage infrastructure owned by the main DOT. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Second, uh, a motion. Mr. Second. Chair, if I might ask one yes. clarification. Um, because we have a building occupancy switch, so we're currently in the existing building, they're gonna move into the new building and then they're gonna demolish the existing building. Could we make sure that it's the final occupancy certificate and not that, that one that's gonna cover the temporary shift into the new building? Because that, um, since they're going to be demoing, that area is right in front of. There's no occupancy, though, with the demolition, though, correct? There's the occupancy. They would be in the new building with the demolition. So are you suggesting it goes with a demolition permit? or? I'm suggesting the completion of it um, would have to be after the demo. Because they're going to, if they seed this and they're demolishing the building, they're going to rip up all that grass in the process as they're pulling it out of there while they're in the new building. So could we have it tied to a final performance guarantee or some other final occupancy? And I apologize, it was so simple sure. before. <laughs> All right. Um, we're just looking at this on the fly. Give me ideas, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> Right. right. So I think, yeah. just to clarify, we, there might actually be a temporary CFO in place for the building permit. So I think I just wanted to make sure that they're not, they're not going to be in violation. So right. you think there's a temporary for the switchover, and then you get right. a the, final. The final. Right. So if it's just tied to and the then final. And you would demo the building. Well, yeah, they would demo the building. I think then they would get their final CFO, right? So that the so site is all a established. Conditional certificate of occupancy that you'd originally get? I think they are, I think the plan is a temporary CFO, right? I think that's <laughs> building permit. Well, yeah, uh, and Dale Akeley uh, for Sunshine Realty. Uh, could you issue, can, can we uh, uh, plan on a temporary CFO so that we'll be able to occupy the new building, do our demo, final site cleanup, and then the final CFO would be issued. Then we'd wrap up any, uh, um, performance guarantee items and that sort of thing. Is that a feasible path? <laughs> I, I guess I... It might, that might have a different codes. Thing. We, maybe that's a codes that's, question. That's what I, I guess yeah. Yeah, I think that's just at, a, yeah. we, the codes. We could, we could potentially modify condition one so that it says, in accordance with the approved plans prior to the release of the performance guarantee. I love it. And then that way we're not... That way they're held to it. Yeah. Right. Any issues with the board on that? Prior to the release. Okay. Any comments on that? That's fine. A motion to amend your motion. All right. All right. Um, to replace the words issuance of a certificate of occupancy with the release of a performance guarantee. Second. We have an amended, seconded motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? All in favor of the amended motion. All in favor of the amended motion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry for the Thank you. Moving on to item number six, Rainin Properties LLC and Chamberlain Construction Inc. request an amended subdivision plan review, sixth amendment, 
for the Dunstan Crossing subdivision, Broad Turn Road and US Route 1, Assessor's Map, U30, Lots 16 and 17. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this item was also tabled uh, due to the late hour at the last meeting, um, so it carried over to tonight. Uh, this project is located in the TBC and BR2 zoning districts in the Dunstan Crossing <laughs> subdivision. Uh, so the applicant's proposing to relocate a phase and property line uh, between phases four and five of the subdivision to allow for the reallocation of a duplex from phase five to phase four. This time, staff has no further comments about the proposal. Thank you. Uh, is anyone from the applicant's team here, if you have anything to add? Um, not at this time. I'm actually filling in Kylie Mason again, uh, okay. filling in for Sean Frank. Uh, the applicant and Sean couldn't be here tonight, so hopefully I can answer any questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, we also have the opportunity for any public comment on this item. yourself please certainly <clears throat> chairman fellows and members of the board my name is Michael Conniff I appear tonight on behalf of the board of directors of the Dunson Crossing Condominium Association the association represents 48 homeowners a great number of whom are here today and I present these remarks on their behalf So as described in the governing documents, the Dunson Crossing Condominium Association is an owner of the property that surrounds the condominium structures at Dunson Crossing and the common elements include the real property abutting the area that would be impacted by the <clears throat> request that is pending before the board. Therefore, our association has standing to uh, comment and to raise objections to a grant of the request made by Ryan Properties and Chamberlain Construction, which is a related company of Chamberlain Homes. Now, to set the stage, uh, the Dunstan Crossing Condominium Association Board applauds the vision of Elliot Chamberlain, the president of Chamberlain Homes, and the efforts of Elliot, his colleagues at Chamberlain Homes and Chamberlain Construction, and their contractors and subcontractors to make the envisioned Dunstan, Cro Dunstan Crossing neighborhood a reality, a goal that our condominium association shares. The board also thanks you and your predecessors on the planning board to help make this neighborhood a reality. It has turned into a wonderful place to live, a perfect community. <clears throat> But we also thank you for your continuing oversight as you fulfill your obligations to ensure that uh, Chamberlain Homes ran uh, properties and the developers, uh, subcontractors, and other contractors uh, fulfilled the requirements that the planning board has set um, and that they be fulfilled diligently. Overall, the collaboration between the Condominium Association and the Chamberlain Companies has been good, and the unit owners have been generally pleased with the workmanship of Chamberlain Homes. However, there have been some differences of approach and opinion, even significant disagreements between the association and the developer. For example, there are three very substantial issues that are still pending and are increase, increasingly undermining the confidence that the association has in the developer's ability to fulfill its obligations to the planning board's approved plan, of which this amendment is part of, and to the Dunstan Crossing community that is under development. The first issue involves the persistent deterioration and disintegration of brick stairways uh, due to poor workmanship on the brick stairs installation at the two row houses on Walton Drive, which the association asserts is the responsibility of Chamberlain Homes to fix. Thus far, the association has expended approximately $40,000 to repair the stairs and anticipates that the total cost will exceed $80,000 after full remediation has been completed. The association contends that Chamberlain Homes is responsible for the remediation 
and the Chamberlain Homes has refused to act in good faith uh, to repair the stairs. A civil suit has been initiated. Mediation has been proposed to no avail at this juncture. And arbitration of the dispute may become necessary. The second issue involves the developer's decision not to substantially complete the paving of McCann Way and Larry Falls Drive. Apparently to facilitate the construction in phase four and for the convenience of the developer. As a result, the town will not accept the roads as municipal property, meaning that the town does not have the responsibility to plow snow from the roads during the winter. Although the roadways are unfinished for the convenience of the developer and the association believes that the governing documents make the developer responsible for clearing snow and other maintenance tasks, the developer has refused to accept those responsibilities, which may also lead to litigation, including arbitration, uh, to be brought by the Master Association, of which the Condominium Association is a constituent member. The third issue involves the landscaped retention pond at the border of phases two and three, I believe, at the end of Walden Drive. The association believes that despite uh, considerable deliberations uh, by and requirements imposed by this board and other responsible governing agencies, the retention pond has not been maintain maintained in accord with the maintenance plan approved by the board. As a result, there may also be significant costs to remediate uh, the, the condition of the pond which includes a cat of nine tails and algae infestation. The association in its capacity as a constituent member of the Master Association believes that it is the responsibility of the developer to remediate the problem. None of these three issues, among others, is insurmountable. But so far, the developer has persistently resisted any meaningful discussions about resolving the problems. So long as the intransigence exists, the association cannot have confidence that the applicants in this particular application be pending before the board will discharge their responsibilities to the municipality, meaning the planning board and the town, as well as the community. Consequently, the Condominium Association respectfully requests that the Planning Board either table the application until these issues are resolved or to approve the request, the application, contingent on satisfactory remediation of these three issues each of which has a bearing on the applicant's preparedness to fulfill its responsibilities for development of the Dunstan Crossing neighborhood according to the overarching plan of which this application is a part of that has been previously approved by the board. Now we thank you, I speak for 48 families, for your attention to our perspectives. Uh, I will take any questions that you might have. I do have copies uh, of my written remarks uh, for each of you that I will hand to you as I head back to my seat. But I would welcome any questions from you. Thank you. Um, we'll have uh, any questions will come through the chair and through the board once we're done with all public comment. Okay. I wanted to first give the opportunity for anyone else who may want to thank you. come up. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else? Uh, my name is Richie Axelson, and I reside at 8 Colby Drive, also in Dunstan Crossing. And uh, I, I think, uh, you know, Mike summed it up really crystal clear. And uh, I've lived in the neighborhood for three years, and, and although I will give praise to Elliot on building a very, very strong, nice home, his maintenance um, skills, or thereafter, if you will, uh, are less than desirable. Um, many, many a times there's been situations uh, in which um, there's been homeowners as well as 
condo owners who have complained um, or issued a complaint regarding our neighborhood, something going on with it, um, and, and uh, it, if it gets done, it takes an uh, enormous amount of time. Although I can't speak on behalf of what Mike spoke, and he spoke pretty clear about the issues going on with the condo association, um, I'll just speak on behalf of the situation that Mike touched upon with the plowing um, of the phase three. Um, I've had endless conversations with both the public, direct, uh, public works director, Mike Shaw, and I've had the opportunity of speaking with uh, Angela Blanchard, which I thank you very much. Um, and from everything that I can gather, uh, it is the developer's responsibility to take care of that parcel of land, that, those roads, whether it be plowing, maintenance, a pothole, whatever that might be, it is not nothing to do with a homeowner or the condo association, nor should we have to have that taken out of our budgets or our pockets to maintain that road. Um, and in, in a meeting, a master association meeting, um, he's defied that. And after speaking with Mr. Shaw, the public works director, he had great concerns because when it was brought to their attention to ask if they would plow that area, being the city and it's a non-accepted road, there were certain restrictions put out that they would do that for a certain amount, but it was under his understanding, it was directly through Chamberlain Homes and the town of Scarborough, not anything to do with the association. And when I explained that to him, that we bought as a board, as a board, we put in the minutes that we would accept the fact because we obviously it was a safety issue needed these roads plowed. We would like to find out the whose responsibility this actually is. Uh, again, I from the information I've gathered both from Angela and from Mr. Shaw, it, it's his responsibility. And I will just say this that. Uh, when, when we as homeowners and condo owners have to continually pay for this stuff, and I'm hearing from Mr. Shaw that this could be a legal issue because it's coming from Elliot and Chamberlain Homes that it's between him and the town, it's really not. Because we're paying for this. We're paying for these roads to be cleared. So, as Mike said, I would ask that you either table this uh, or, or, or oppose it at this point until these conditions can be followed, both for the homeowner and for the condo owners. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much for the comments and possible there may be some follow-up questions. Um, Roger, do you want to start yeah. off? Thank you. <laughs> you don't have to. No, I will. Um, it seems to me that what we're, what we're confronted with here is almost an administrative issue, just changing the line, the phasing line on, on this particular thing. But I do believe that these homeowners have a serious issue, and I'm not sure um, where to go with that. Uh, I imagine it, it would be in the purvey of the um, building inspector. I, I'm not sure, but it, it seems to me if, if we took care of this tonight with the condition that we won't do anything further beyond that until this situation is resolved, if that makes any sense. Well, we can... Let's, let's, I mean, uh, it, it, yeah. do you, is this, a, is, to me, this is just an administrative issue tonight, just changing the boundary line on the phases. And we can flesh that out. I mean, I think um, if we were to approve that, I don't know that we would necessarily have to state in a condition that we won't approve anything else because they, they would, just based on the process, they would have yeah. to get 
further approvals, but I, I think we need to make sure we fully fully understand that. I mean, it seems to me these homeowners have a le very legitimate grievance, a series of grievances, and I don't know who's responsible for that. It, it seems to me some some place in the planning department, the building inspector, or whatever, and um, to make sure they're fulfilling the contract. So. I'll, I'll leave it at that right now and listen to what other board members. Okay. Thank you. Next. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think, if I'm understanding correctly, even an administrative moving of a boundary line at this point, is the reason they want to do this is so they can build in another building, right? And if we have previous phasing that doesn't seem to be completed or is being completed to subpar standards, is it wise for us to say yes, put another building into the mix even before they haven't taken care of some, perhaps some, what sounds like some performance issues? So, I mean, from where I'm sitting, I would like to hear, you know, I, I don't think this board needs to get in, involved with a le potential legal battle, right. and we have to address what we have in front of us. But I, I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, adding another building into the mix prudent given what we're hearing, um, at least not with an applicant, um, you know, here to help sort this out a little. So that would be my, one of my so, bigger concerns. Thanks. I think, if, uh, if I may, Mr. Chair, I think I would offer the following. I was certainly involved in the planning of the project on its original phases, but I would offer the following. Um, performance on a, a previously approved and under construction project is probably um, going through a guarantee process with a release, right? I'm it, sorry, I didn't hear you. Is the, you sure. <laughs> sorry. I don't think it's going to help me for you guys or help you guys if I uh, speak into this. But um, my assumption is that their performance guarantee has not been released fully. Correct. So my, my assumption would be this, and, and I think that it, this is an administrative function. We're moving a lot line one building. But that, in its own right, carries a new performance measure with it. And their, their current performance guarantee has not been released for final paving. And so that final paving performance guarantee is what's ensuring the completion of the roadways uh, for town acceptance. And I would say that while they're still under construction, it's still a project not yet completed and would offer that. I think certainly there's some, there's some things that can be enforced that are an enforcement issue, but don't necessarily fall under a lot line adjustment. But that certainly there is a, a level of purview there. Thank you. Jamila, do you have something? I just add that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we're, we're in board discussion now. Thank you. Just a quick point of clarification before uh, we go down further. The, the, the applicant's not proposing an additional building, they're just reallocating it within the phase. Mm -hmm. so the, Den the overall density of the project remains the same. So there's not an addition, there's not nothing additional. It's just within phase four instead of phase five. Just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Robin? Yeah, and it sounds, to me, it sounds like the majority of uh, the issues raised this evening, too, are for phase three, which has, which is separate from um, what's in front of us tonight, but please Correct me if I'm wrong, um, colleagues. Um, and so I've I've wondered about this in the past on other division, you know, on other subdivisions, and it's um, I think we've gone past phase three. We're in phase four and five, and so I think we can really only look at what's in front of us tonight. And um, I don't have any questions on this administrative type change like Roger and, and Nick had, had sort of said. So um, I'm inclined to, again, let the performance guarantee. I, I, I am very much sorry that there is this issue with trying to live in a neighborhood that's only half complete. I'm very much, you know, I, I, I'm sympathetic to that. But un unfortunately, what we have in front of us is phase four and five. It's not phase three. So that's where I'm at. Thank you. Rachel? Yeah, I have to uh, agree with my, my colleagues. I don't think mine is on. 
Uh, I have to uh, agree with my colleagues who are simply asked to move an already approved building from one phase of construction to, to another, uh, and that is not phase three. Um, I'm concerned with some of the uh, issues that have been brought up that have been raised by the, the condo association, um, <coughs> especially in terms of the stormwater management and the degradation of one of the, the ponds for that and the uh, existence of algae and, and cattails. I just don't think that the planning board is actually the board uh, that looks at that. Um, we're asked to move uh, an approved building from one phase to a different phase. That's, that's all we're asked to do. Uh, it, and I don't see our role in enforcing uh, or forcing uh, a, a developer to meet a performance guarantee. There are other ways to go within the town, and I, I would urge uh, the folks to, to try that. Thank you, Rachel. Rick? Um, you know, I think Rachel and Robin stated it pretty well. I, I, I did have one point of clarification. Is the, um, the gentleman that spoke first, is the group that he represents actually part of the Dunstan Crossing? Okay. Your question? No, that's, that's my, that was my only question. I guess the council chair. So that, yeah, uh, I, I, I have the answer. I'm, I'm good. That was my only okay. question. Thank you. I saw all the heads nod. The second person was Yeah, I, I think that, you know, it's important that the performance, um, the, that's separate from what we're doing here tonight with this lot line. So it really, although I understand and, and feel for the um, the folks when you're and the issues that you're having, it's it's not unfortunate. It's not related to what we're. It is related, but it, I think we have to. You know, there's nothing. There's, we have to pass this as far as I can see. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, this is a, it's, these situations can be tough, and I think we're all fully sympathetic, and we periodically see these, and maybe some of us have experienced these situations where you're living sort of the reality of a phased development, and sometimes that can be a little bit messy. Um, and I don't think any of us are questioning that there may have been some issues with workmanship and follow through, and at the same time, um, as has been noted, I, I don't think it's appropriate for us to get really wrapped up in the middle of um, something particularly that's um, heading into or in some cases already in litigation um, and sort of, you know, there are issues there between those two parties to which the planning board is not really a party. Um, and it's been stated we're, we're, although it may sometimes be frustrating to members of the public and sometimes to us, frankly, at times, depending on the situation, we're ultimately not an enforcement body. Um, the the homeowners and and citizens certainly have other means, other recourse through the through the the uh, building inspection department and and public works and the the way that the uh, performance guarantee is is enforced. So I would agree with with all of that. And I think again here we have to really stay focused on what's what's truly in front of us and. As has been stated, I would encourage um, the homeowners to remain engaged, and hopefully uh, that can be worked out. Uh, it's unfortunate that you know that Elliot wasn't able to be here this evening. I know this had been tabled from a previous item. Um, you know, this is the first any of us are hearing about this, um, and um, I think under the under the circumstances, for the reasons that have been stated by my colleagues, I think we need to stay focused on uh, this uh, delineation between phases four and five and all those other means of recourse for the issues that folks are experiencing um, remain there. Um, so I don't think this really changes that. So um, 
I'll therefore uh, move to approve the project titled Six Amended Subdivision Plan of Dunstan Crossing proposed by Rain and Properties LLC and Chamberlain Construction Inc. as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics dated October 29, 2018. The applicant is proposing to relocate the phase property line between phases four and five. The overall project density and general development pattern remain unchanged. All prior conditions of approval remain in effect. Second. Any further discussion? Just, just one question. Uh, maybe uh, Jamal can clarify this for myself as well as the public. When we're talking about a phase development, uh, can I assume that each phase has a performance guarantee associated with, with it? And is there a deadline for that? Typically, uh, it doesn't just, it's not, you know, unlimited. It has, has some point of a period that has to be accomplished, right? That's a really good question. Um, actually, the performance guarantees for subdivisions go through our engineering department. Oh. <laughs> um, so I'm going to refer to our uh, expert in that, uh, Angela. Yeah, we, doesn't mind. Um, we have a performance guarantee for each of the phases, and I will just, just for information purposes, um, as far as phase three goes, um, typically for acceptance of streets, we don't like to have heavy equipment and vehicles go over our surface paving that we just accepted a street where damage could occur. So we did work with the developer to say, you need to have this construction route to get to phase three, three until that's done. So. I'll take ownership of some of that, that that didn't get surface paved because um, we really don't want to accept a street that has damaged new surface pavement on it. So um, we did work with trying to limit the boundaries of where the surface paving happens. When we accept it, we are accepted phase one and two. The council has already accepted those as, as streets. Um, and so as Kylie had mentioned, so we hold performance guarantee for the remainder of what's in the right of way. It sounds like there's some other issues, some out of the right of way, some with the pond, um, those type of things. And I know um, this has a DEP permit um, and is something that um, gets a recertification through DEP, so they'll be looking at the ponds again. Unfortunately, this subdivision occurred before our post-construction ordinance was in place, which for the public, that means um, new subdivisions coming in, we do an annual report the homeowners association or the developer needs to actually provide us that information saying it's being maintained. Um, we put that in place so this type of thing wouldn't happen um, because DEP looks at it a, at a longer span. So um, while that's not probably reassuring, I, I will say we've, we've heard, this isn't the first time that um, we've heard things aren't being maintained and that's why we have some measures in place now. Um, and it is something that we can definitely look at if the pond is one specifically that staff can kind of can look at. Um, and as uh, Mr. Axwell said, um, I have heard about the plowing, which Public Works does enter into an agreement, um, has an agreement with um, Chamberlain Homes to plow. And a part of that agreement is um, release of liability if things get damaged and there's certain criteria to make sure um, we don't damage our equipment either. They have to have it so it's actually passable, things like that. Um, and that agreement is with the developer who, as mentioned, when we read through what was passed through this board, it is on, it, it appears from staff's point of view that that is on, on his ownership to maintain that for winter operations. And so that's who the town has the agreement with. Thank you, that's helpful context in the background. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, we still have a seconded motion on the table. All in favor? Show that to be unanimous. Thank you. Right. Item number seven, Valentine Development LLC requests an amended subdivision plan review 13th Amendment for the Eastern Village Subdivision, Assessor's Map R73, Lots 21A and 21B. Jamel? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this project is located in the traditional neighborhood design zoning district. That's the Eastern Village Subdivision. 
Uh, the applicant is proposing uh, several updates to the approved 12th amended subdivision plan. Uh, staff has provided the specific proposed modifications in our review memo uh, for tonight's meeting. Staff would like to point out that the applicant is seeking to realign the intersection of Federal Way and Old Eastern Road to a more traditional T intersection, and the Public Safety and Public Works Departments do support this proposal. And that's what I have right now. Thanks, Jamel, and I will hand it over to Mr. Anderson. Good morning, Chair. Good, good evening, Chairman. So, Chairman, members of the board, Kerry Anderson, Valentine Development. So, we were on the last uh, agenda for the last meeting, and we tabled it just to clean a couple of items up. I believe they have since been uh, cleaned up. And um, Stevie Bushy couldn't be here tonight, but uh, I'm happy to answer any questions related to anything with respect to the request and the submission. Thank you. Uh, before we go to board discussion, is there any public comment on this item? Um, any board comment or questions at this point? Roger. The only, the only question I have is um, you referred to Lot 120, and I could not find 120 on here. Can you point that out? I sure. Found, I found 128. Lot 120 is right here. Triangle oh, lot. way down here. Okay. And, and the only other thing I wanted to ask you, and it doesn't really pertain to this, um, but it, just in general, could you refresh my, refresh me, when you talk about a town center, what's your vision of what that would look like in the future? A town center? Yeah, it's on, it's on your master plan here. Um, well, a town center um, can be a number of different things in traditional um, development patterns. It's really where um, you can have some neighborhood retail. You have a mix of uses, neighborhood retail, uh, civic buildings and such that uh, could occur there. It's really meant to be kind of like the central area for your project, whether it's a town, a city, a project, a neighborhood. And um, when we got the project approved originally, we had a lot of areas that we could do certain things depending, depending upon how it evolved and how the demand was out in the marketplace. And the reason why we're making some of these changes now is some of those things haven't come to pass or haven't come to fruition, I should say. So we're changing it to reflect market conditions and also where the neighborhood's at and where we see it going. Okay. I'm all set. Thanks. Anyone else? So, yes, I think this is fairly straightforward, and we appreciate getting the, the comments mm -hmm. from, from staff. Um, so without further ado, I will put forward a motion. I move to approve the project titled Eastern Village, proposed by Ballantyne Development, LLC, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Stantec, dated October 29, 2018, with the following findings and conditions. Findings, as stated, will be part of the record. I will not read them all. Uh, conditions, number one, prior to the release of the Mylar 4 recording, the applicant shall address the traffic peer review comments and traffic solutions memorandum dated December 1st, 2018. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. And number two, the existing conditions from the planning board approvals for the 11th and 12th amended subdivision plans will remain in effect. That is the motion. Second. Yes. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, can I make one comment? Yes. I believe the uh, traffic comments have been, uh, maybe it's just a matter of uh, uh, policy on the, on the board's part, but I believe we've uh, addressed the, uh, the traffic issues. Unless I'm missing something, and maybe that, that your, your uh, words didn't allude to the fact that we weren't, I don't know. I just want to make sure that's clear. Yeah, and I think it, but did you want to? I can jump so, in, uh, yeah. Gary. There were a few minor sign and striping additions oh. recommended in the memo. Um, that, that's what that entails. But we can't do that prior to release of the Mylar, can we? Because we have to have the Mylar recorded to be able to facilitate the work. Well, I, we would just like to see them reflected on the plans. Oh, okay. Not on the face of the earth. Okay, on the Mylar or on the subdivision on the plan? Subdivision. On the okay. T intersection. The diagram you guys provided. Okay, understood. Thank Thanks. you. Okay. That's good clarification. 
Anything else? All, right. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Item number eight, Chris and Joanne Capron request an advisory opinion for a miscellaneous appeal for a conversion of a non-conforming use for 10 Pine Point Road, Assessor's Map U34, Lot 22. Uh, sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll just uh, sort of describe the process for the board tonight. Uh, so the applicant has applied for a mis miscellaneous appeal to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a conversion of a legal non-conforming use. So in accordance with the zoning ordinance, uh, before making a decision on any miscellaneous appeal, uh, the ZBA shall refer the appeal to the planning board for an advisory opinion. Uh, the advisory opinion should be based on the non-conforming standards found in the zoning ordinance. So the existing non-approved uh, non-conforming use on the property is a single-family dwelling unit, and the applicant is proposing to convert the single-family dwelling unit into a two-family dwelling. Uh, Minimal comments here. Given the proposal, uh, staff encourages the applicant to delineate the parking spaces on site uh, to ensure safe internal vehicle circulation. And that's what I have. Thank you. Do we have any public comment on this item? All right. Uh, any board comment? Any questions from the board? No. Going, going. All right. Um, yeah, I don't really have any particular issues with this either. I would just echo, and I think um, I think I can speak for the board in saying that we uh, endorse staff's recommendations regarding delineating the parking spaces. Um, and uh, beyond that, wish you luck uh, at CBA, and we're, we're sending a positive opinion. Thank you. Number nine, BBS Enterprises, Inc. requests a site plan review for 62 Muzzy Road, Assessor's Map, R37, Lot R, Lot 38. Jamil? Thank you. I believe the applicants are here. Um, there we go. Just make sure. Um, so this is located in the TVC uh, zoning district. The applicant is proposing to construct a 4,860-foot uh, square foot restaurant, uh, relocate the existing barn on the site to be used as storage for the restaurant, and renovate the existing farmhouse into an office space. The applicant uh, presented a preliminary site plan to the board at the September meeting and has provided a revised submission for tonight's review. As the board may recall, the applicant received uh, site plan approval for the same use in September of 2015 uh, due to a site plan violation related to tree cutting within the 25 foot stream setback. The previous town and state approvals were voided and the project was placed on hold. The applicant has since revegetated the stream setback in accordance with Maine DEP and has been reapproved by Maine DEP as well. Staff would like to note that given uh, restaurants and professional offices are limited to 5,000 square feet for area per unit of occupancy in the TBC3 zoning district, the proposed division of occupancy to be permitted will need to be depicted on the building's floor plans. Uh, the applicant did not provide a clear division on the submitted floor plans uh, that we're reviewing tonight. As indicated on the site and layout plan, the relocated barn is proposed to be considered as an accessory structure and will only be used as storage for the restaurant. As the board may recall, this was a significant review element during the 2015 review process, so the applicant should ensure the board that the accessory storage space will only be used for the proposed restaurant. The board may want to consider enabling the applicant to provide funds equal to the proposed sidewalk along Muzzy Road towards the town's multimodal reserve account. This approach would provide opportunities for better coordination and consideration of the sidewalk network uh, within this area. The applicant has indicated that they are interested in this approach as well. Staff suggests that the applicant provide additional buffering measures along the eastern and western property lines in order to shield structures and vehicles uh, from abutting properties. So the board should discuss this with the applicant tonight. The applicant has also provided several 3D renderings of the building in site as requested by the board, uh, and staff encourages the applicant to uh, incorporate the location of the restaurant hoods within these restaurant, within these re renderings to ensure they will be screened 
uh, from Muzzy Road. And before I turn it over to Angela to discuss some stormwater management details, we did receive uh, one email um, from an abutter today, and that was provided to the board uh, for their consideration tonight. Now I'll turn it over to Angela. Um, I just wanted to, I guess, a comment that every time this has been in front of the board, I just, again, going to say it again, um, that uh, I, while DEP and Army Corps of Engineers um, provides permitting for, for this site in particular, um, they don't really focus on the local level flooding issues. They have a flooding standard, but um, I think some of the board members that were here from the beginning have heard not only from this site, but other sites in this watershed, um, including Carrier Woods and others. We heard a whole, the whole neighborhood um, around Honan with the concerns of the downstream flows. Um, and so I just wanted to, I guess, have it be part of the conversation again. Um, while the neighbors are not here because it's not part of um, what the ordinance says that about uh, notifications uh, for the site plan, it's just something that we should keep in mind, I think, that um, there are some concerns with flooding downstream um, just because of the amount of development in this watershed. And w staff's comments had indicated um, about just asking for the HydroCAD model and the files that we can kind of go through um, just to kind of make sure we have a better idea of what's happening on the site where um, there's quite a few, quite a bit of wetland fill and things like that, which this watershed has already a lot of and while we can't put that all on this developer I totally get that um, we really should make sure we understand the total impacts um, downstream okay. thank you anything else from staff uh, no thank That's you fine. thank you both and I'll hand it over to the applicants representative thank you mr. chairman uh, <clears throat> mr. chairman members of the board I'm Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions and uh, we've got the uh, privilege tonight to be able to address you regarding the uh, hopefully drawing on the conclusion of the Asian Fusion Restaurant. As Jamel stated uh, a couple of years ago, actually several years ago, we were initially before the board without rehashing what he's already very effectively described to you by way of very quick background. Uh, we did have this site approved a couple of years ago. Uh, then the general uh, uh, contractor went in and basically leveled everything. It was not a wooded site, it was developed, uh, but there was a fair amount of uh, woods in the area of the stream that you see on the, uh, on the plan. Uh, they were specifically stated, you know, don't go there. This is a non-cut area. It was pretty much everywhere in the plans, in the documents, and the GC went in and cut it all anyway. Um, so hence, there was a big problem for everybody. And uh, as Jamel stated, it was put on hold, as it should have been. And there was a revegetation plan, uh, which was about a year and a half ago, uh, that was submitted both to the DEP and the Army Corps, who were very, very, in and to the town, um, who were very involved in taking a look at this, uh, because they wanted to make sure that this kind of thing doesn't happen again. It's indeed a small stream. It just drains the wetland area that's uh, literally right above us, or right above this property, which is the back of what was the Walmart is now the Martins. Uh, nevertheless, we still have an obligation to be able to make sure that we attenuate stormwater on our site. And we certainly don't exacerbate anything. Um, so uh, we wanted to come back to you now and state that, yes, indeed, it has gone more than one full season for the revegetation. And the DEP and the Army Corps have been out to the site and have taken a look at it and have approved it. Um, in fact, it, it's easier to say that it's better than it was. Uh, it's not yet, uh, but it certainly will be because it was planted with completely native vegetation. And what was there before, as we all know, just from our own yards and in the woods around here, there's a lot of invasive species. Those species, if there was any benefit to cutting that out completely, I think if they got rid of all the, the, uh, the invasive species. Uh, not funny, but uh, because it shouldn't have been cut that close to the stream, but it was, and uh, fortunately what's been planted in its stead now is all native. And uh, that planting has been also expanded a bit beyond what it was um, in terms of there were several large trees out there. Those were cut. Um, now there's about, there's a profligacy of about four times as many trees, albeit smaller, they have to grow, uh, that were actually there and cut to begin with. So in the long run, and it's already started, the, uh, the, re the revegetation has taken root and it's going to be quite nice. It's going to take a few years to get back to, or more to get back to the way it was. Um, but it's certainly uh, nice, and, and the, uh, the DEP has been taking a look at it uh, almost ad nauseum just to make sure that it was working. Uh, this past summer, they made sure that uh, there were a couple of dying uh, of all the bushes and the trees that were planted there. There were a few that were meeting their demise, and uh, they went in to replace them, which is exactly what we wanted to have happen. So everything is now, as far as the vegetation is concerned, pretty good. Uh, notwithstanding that fact, what I will do is uh, 
I want to point out that Mike Richmond is here uh, this evening from Custom Concepts. He is the architect involved. And uh, to the extent that uh, uh, the board has any questions regarding the architecture, he'll be up here in just a few moments to be able to address that portion. And if you have any technical questions, Travis Lepetelier from our office, uh, PE from our office for this project is here to be able to answer those. Uh, as um, Jamal had pointed out, and I won't bore you with all the details. I know we were here a couple, three months ago explaining what was going on. Some of us were here originally uh, when we did the original approval several years ago or a couple of years ago. Uh, so I'll just kind of, I'm not going to read through this list, but I will address them. And then uh, if you have any questions or comments uh, when I'm finished, please feel free to, uh, to ask them. Uh, again, notwithstanding the architectural drawings uh, under general zoning requirements, Mike will deal with that. Uh, we're talking about uh, storage space being only used as an accessory to use to the restaurant. Yes, that was stated prior to um, or in the previous approval, and that's the same way it is right now. Uh, our client has indicated that uh, they have no intention of using that for anything other than storage. Uh, they've gone on record toward that. We're on record with that. So uh, toward that end, assuming that the client uh, adheres to everything that the board puts on it as a condition, then uh, that is on that extra structure, that barn, the old barn, is only going to be for storage. Um, it will be not part of the restaurant at all. Uh, as far as the signage is concerned, that is something that we had always intended to come back to the board with. Uh, our client is not yet ready to uh, uh, do the signage. Uh, he would like to be able to see, he'd like to get this further going a little bit based on kind of where it was going at the time before they cut everything out there and the, and the overall project was put on hold. The point being is that we will be back to the board probably relatively soon, meaning sometime in the springtime or early summer, uh, perhaps even a little bit earlier as far as the signage is concerned, but we're not addressing that now. That's completely separate. As far as the site plan review elements are concerned, uh, we do request a waiver as we had last time. Uh, and this is, this is the only waiver that we're requesting for this project, and that is the proximity of the entranceway for the access. Uh, there is, uh, it's about, uh, I think about 25 feet or so between the, uh, the two uh, access points. This is, as you're looking at the drawing, it's the access point to the, uh, the abutter to our right, and then our drive. Uh, they've both been there. In fact, uh, our, our driveway was there far before the other one, but it doesn't make any difference. They're both there now. Uh, this is the only access that we've been able to get them. And we have on the site, the other side of our parcel is where the stream actually comes in, and then we've got the uh, actual farmhouse smack dab in the middle. So putting this right on the right side is the only means of access, which is where it's always been for quite a number of decades. But because we're coming for site plan review, we do need a waiver for that distance between those two driveways. Uh, and that is something that uh, we can certainly discuss toward the end of, of my presentation here. As far as internal uh, vehicular uh, circulation is concerned, there was a question from the fire department about, uh, or a concern basically, about them being able to get around with that template. We did rerun that template again. Uh, it's run for a four, and you've got that information in your packets. Uh, it was run for a 40 foot long vehicle. It does show that the turning radii does work. It's ideal you know, for emergency vehicles not to have anything in their way, whether it's parked cars or trees or trash cans or whatever it might be. Um, in this particular case, we assumed that the entire parking lot would be completely full of cars. Uh, and running, that's how it was designed, so we ran that template, and it does indeed work. And we ran it again. It may not be absolutely ideal. They'd probably rather have a completely cleared field, like they've had at 2 in the morning kind of thing. But uh, even if there is a... Uh, uh, a situation that would require an emergency vehicle, basically a fire engine, to be able to get on site, uh, say, in an evening when there's still a lot of vehicles there, they can certainly make that. And again, I call your attention to the template that's in your, in your packet that does show how that can be negotiated. As far as parking areas are concerned, uh, the, we wanted to leave uh, as many places as we could open for snow storage. Uh, if any of us remember, all of us remember this past year, we had a heck of a lot of snow in the springtime, and there's a... Uh, a dearth of places in some, in some uh, projects in which to be able to put it, and we wanted to make sure we had plenty of room. Toward that end, there was a comment about, uh, um, from the staff about the landscaping. We had a, uh, a larger tree just on the front right-hand side of the access of the driveway uh, that was a little bit more toward the, uh, the parking area. Uh, we have, at staff's request, moved that toward the street uh, because they were concerned specifically about uh, let's keep that area open for snow storage if we can. We agree. There's no reason not to. So the tree that we're proposing there is actually now uh, right up along the street and is basically in line with the other three trees that you see here in front of the building. That allows additional snow storage between that tree and the, uh, uh, the actual parking area. Also, this is important because we've got several areas on site for snow storage. One of them uh, segues to a comment by staff 
regarding the back left hand side of the parcel. Uh, as you can see in that section, thank you, that section of, uh, um, of parking area that we have there, about half of that uh, has a guardrail directly associated with it. The latter half, the latter four spaces there, do not have a guardrail there. We did that specifically because that is also uh, a snow storage area. Uh, if we had a guardrail there, we wouldn't be able to put it in that area, and that would severely limit what we're looking at. This is not in the wetlands, it's in a buffer that's generally speaking uh, associated with that. So there's plenty of room back there for snow storage, but obviously we can't have any fences or guardrails or anything else in the way because they would either crack, the, the snow plowing would crack right through it, um, or it would have to go up and over it, and that never really works. So that's the reason why we did not extend the guardrail further down uh, toward the very back uh, upper left of the, of the, uh, of the site. Uh, however, we did put the comment was, you know, you want to make sure, we should make sure that anybody who parks in those four spaces doesn't just start parking a little or pull a little too far into the space and start leaving the pavement. So we do have curb stops that are there. Those are curb stops that are literally bolted into the, uh, into the pavement. So they're not going anywhere. Uh, we didn't want to put an actual curb there because that would redirect stormwater that otherwise would go there through the curb stops. So the curb stops are perfect. They'll literally do what they're supposed to in stopping the wheels of the vehicle. Even if they weren't there, they're only talking about two feet of relief in that area. And we don't want to extend anything out too much flatter because we're now getting into that area that we around the stream that we'd like to avoid. The curb stops take care of that. Stops anybody, if they pull in that far, the tires will hit them and they won't go any further. And that would take care of that issue. Um, under, uh, uh, let's see, under pedestrian ways, uh, we certainly agree as far as the, uh, the sidewalk issue is concerned. There's no problem there. If the town would like the sidewalk built in front of uh, this particular uh, project, we can do that. But uh, we've spoken with staff about that, and it was really determined that it would be better, as for many projects, uh, to take the amount of money that would otherwise be required to build a sidewalk for the extent of this frontage, but apply it. Uh, into the town's pool so that the town can use that where it really sees it's most needed and then eventually it might come back to this area, et cetera, but that's completely up to the town. We're happy to do it either way. Whatever the staff wants, we're fine with that. Uh, landscaping and the, the buffering. Uh, there's only really a, a, a one uh, issue along the uh, right side of the, uh, of the structure, or excuse me, the right side of the lot, uh, right where the, uh, the parking spaces are. We've got a, a guardrail there as well. Um, there are some plantings along that area, but in the back, you know, the, the question was, can we augment a little bit more plantings? We really can't in order to be able to assist the stormwater from the other site. Um, there is a French drain system that is running between the trees that you see that are just off of our property uh, that do themselves screen this property overall um, and, uh, and the actual edge of the parking area. And what happened is there would be a pooling of stormwater um, in that particular area that would not actually be on our property uh, from the other property as well as a tiny bit from us because everything from the guardrail and the parking area that you see on the plan is directed to the subgrade detention system that is underneath that parking lot except for the area that is not our property so we created that with a, a French drain system that would allow the stormwater to be collected from the lower property that's immediately adjacent to ours and then a tiny little bit that you know from rain that comes right down um, onto that area on our property uh, the point being is it's a very narrow area, and uh, we think drainage uh, it takes precedent, or dealing with stormwater takes precedent over uh, a little bit of landscaping, only to the extent that we do have a wooden guardrail there, which is not unattractive. And there are several, as you can see, actually more than several, uh, planted trees, and these are uh, they're not old growth, but they've been there for probably the better part of a decade or so. Um, so they're relatively good sized right now, and they're already in that particular location. The point being is it was, the staff was saying, you know, didn't say you had to do that, but just take a look at it, augment if we can. We're happy to do it if we could, but again, I think that would stymie. If we plant any bushes or trees there, the root systems eventually would stymie the French drain system from working properly. Um, so toward that end, uh, we would suggest that the, uh, uh, the landscaping that's already there uh, and the um, guardrail uh, would certainly allow an aesthetic, a fairly aesthetically pleasing area on that side of the property. Uh, there was also a question about uh, plantings and buffering along the westerly edge of the property, which is the other side. Um, as you can see, again, that the, uh, uh, 
uh, well, it's not on this particular plan, but on the, uh, the specific planting and replanting uh, plan, you can see that that entire area, not just in the wetlands, but the buffers in that area as well, have been replanted with a revegetation system. So there's quite a lot of uh, vegetation that's already in the area that was planted about uh, two years ago and then this past year uh, that's coming up rather nicely. Certainly invite you to take a look at it, but it's, it's coming in pretty well. The point being is that there's quite a lot of vegetation that was planted along the westerly side. Um, I'm not sure that we can really augment that any more than we already have. Uh, under stormwater management, <coughs> this, is, this is where it gets fun because we're able to say, and, uh, and Angela can certainly chime in anytime from an engineering perspective, we're actually making this, be this site better from a stormwater perspective than it was before. It's very easy to say somebody who is a layman or who doesn't really understand uh, stormwater management specifically may say, wait a minute, that's, I'm being a little cynical here. Um, you know, how is that going to Im uh, improve anything? Because before we got here, everything on this property ended up flowing in directly into that stream. Uh, now, a lot of this property was vegetated, and it's not going to be now. So what we did to be able to attenuate this, and we, and we got it was the same thing that we had last time when it was approved, is because the subgrade detention system is completely under the parking lot and is oversized, what that means is it's going to take uh, the uh, storm water that falls on the impervious surface areas, which is anything from roof lines to sidewalks to the pavement for the parking area and the streets, et cetera, and it's actually going to direct it to that subgrade detention system. Then what happens is the, the detention system uh, gathers that water uh, in a significant rainstorm event, all of it, and then slows it down, stores it as it's supposed to do, and releases it very, very slowly. And it releases it toward the front of the properties, where it's a subgrade system, that then goes over to join the uh, laterally across the front of the property and joins the stream that's over there, which means when it used to rain and all of the water just went in one big rush right off into that stream, not just for this property but anybody's property around that area, what we're doing now is redirecting it to a subgrade storage system that is releasing it very, very slowly uh, and consistently so that instead of somebody looking out their back the downstream and just looking out their back door and saying, wow, that's a lot of water, there is a lot of water coming through there because it's, most of it is coming from the watershed that's above us. As far as our adding to that water, we're actually not adding to it in any greater amount as far as the volume and the velocity in which it's traveling into that stream. In fact, it's slowing that considerably. So from our perspective, if everybody, for instance, not that this is going to happen, but were to treat storm water in a similar situation in this watershed, there wouldn't be any of those flooding problems uh, because that storm water is stored for the amount of time that it needs to be able to release slowly. Uh, under uh, architectural and signage, um, I'm going to uh, ask uh, um, Mike Rich. Oh, there's one other thing I would like to address, and that was a, a comment about the uh, uh, the outfall uh, for the uh, the stormwater that's going toward the, uh, the stream. Um, <clears throat> we've got a uh, an outfall level spreader, which essentially means that uh, when there's an outfall from a parking area uh, of stormwater, it goes into the subgrade catchment system and then comes out through a culvert somewhere. Uh, it has a propensity, if it's not otherwise treated, as it were, treated at that site, to uh, cause, it, it's kind of referred to as almost like a plunge pool. It, it plunges out, and if it were unstopped or untreated somehow, it would start eroding, uh, creating its own little channel and going into the stream. We don't want that. Erosion and sedimentation control is key. So what happens typically, not just on this site, is we create and design um, these uh, uh, stabilization devices for outfalls so that the, when the water comes out of a culvert or comes down a channel, wherever it might be, it's designed to uh, hit this riprap area, which is a little bit of a hole that's filled up with the riprap, and then it spreads out. It's like a V-shape so that when this water all fills up in this m very mini detention system, by the time it fills up gradually and evenly to the top, it's now spread out over a 25-foot uh, 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 level spreader at the end. So when it's coming into a, a pool initially, it fills this up and then it goes in a 25-foot wide band, basically. It flows over the bank. That's the whole essence of a level spreader. And that worked quite well in this situation so that we don't have any of that scouring effect and, and no erosion that would go in because of that into that stream area. Um, I'd like to introduce Mike Richmond. He will discuss uh, about the, uh, some of the architectural plans based on the comments that you have. And uh, I'll be back up and uh, certainly address any comments or questions that the board has. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening, uh, Mike Richman, Custom Concepts Architecture. Um, I'll be quite brief with this because for the most part, um, the architecture is very similar to it was uh, on the first round. So if you don't mind, I'd like to, I brought some pretty pictures, which of course I have to show. That's all right, that's, that's fine. It's hard for the camera to catch everything anyway. So I actually have just five quick points to make. Um, the first is that the, the, the bulk of the design is pretty much the same as before, with the exception that because of the realignment of the site due to what happened before, um, we basically had to angle the building, which I actually think is probably a better end result because of the angle of the lot and the adjacent building. Sometimes it's hard to tell. It's really more for the, for the TV than for the, yeah. the room. Is that working? We can hear. We can hear you fine. Loud. But yeah. Uh, essentially, forgive my my highlighting. But this was the first round, which, as you could see, here's the farmhouse up front, and everything was in line or orthogonal to that. Because of the new sight lines, now the farmhouse is well, still where it is. We're not moving that, obviously. And this is angled to align with the lots in the building next uh, With that move, the geometry of the kitchen area and the exterior eating area in the back have changed as well. Um, basically just to modify and accommodate the setback to the stream in the back. So the kitchen now has a jog in it and the exterior seating area in the back is much smaller than it was originally. The right hand portion of the porch on the front of the existing farmhouse. The original design a few years ago, that porch was the connection to this new building. Because of the squishing of the lot, we really couldn't do that anymore. And again, I think it's probably for the best. So we now have, <clears throat> we now have a connection towards the back. So the porch basically is as is, as it exists today and we do have the covered connection in the back. So the only real physical connection between these two buildings is this exterior covered walkway and a fence that has a gate in it, but that's literally a regular fence. Another big shift that I think is a very positive element is that the, the exterior seating area in the back on the previous rendition was a patio, and the, in order to get that patio, we were building up a pretty substantial retaining wall, and that was all approved. Um, with this new layout, we're not going to have that. We're going to treat this more like a deck, almost like a deck that you'd see in a house. It's going to come right off the building. It would meet all applicable codes, uh, but the earth underneath it would allow just to slope much more naturally. So I think the end result will be not only much more environmentally friendly, um, but just look a lot better. It'll look a lot less imposing on the site. The last point was uh, materials. The existing farmhouse is pretty much, um, it's all white, <laughs> as, if, if you've seen it. Um, the roof is pretty much a black composite. The proposed stonework that we're looking at on the front would be something similar to this. Very simple, grayish tones, earth tones. We, we really want this building to, to uh, sort of set into the environment. And the wood that you can see in various portions of the elevations, mostly in the back, would be something along this line. Just natural wood. And we're 
are actually looking at different composites or even actual wood with obviously a maintenance component to that. So very simple aesthetics from the exterior. My last comment, I guess, would be related to the hood venting. Uh, at this point, we really have not had an engineer design the kitchen yet, and hence we don't know exactly what the hood system would require or would be. I will say that we purposely placed the kitchen as far back away from the road as we could. As you can see in the design, it's way over here. Here's the road. There's the kitchen. So I don't know the distance of that, but 100 feet. I mean, we're, we're as far back as you can get. Um, so I think the, the screening that's taking place is just naturally by uh, the farmhouse, which is large. It blocks most of this. And the ridge lines of the new addition are mostly going to block whatever happens there. Uh, but we can also work very closely with staff um, when that day comes to make sure that it's minimal. And that is, that is all. Here to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Do you have anything else from the team? Uh, also. Thank you. Um, any public comment? Come on up and introduce yourself. For the record. Okay. Um, Larry Hartwell, 9 Puritan Drive. Um, Bailey's Bait House, Bait Shed, the uh, Garage Barbecue, and the, uh, what's our river up here? None such. None such. Not, yes, the three of them think, the three of those have something in common parking or a lack of adequate parking. And I know those folks were here like last year with a, before the council to allow parking on the streets. So I don't really know anything about this one as far as the amount of parking is concerned, but I hope that uh, there's an adequate number of parking spaces for the size of the restaurant. That's all. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. So we'll turn to board discussion. I, I just want to briefly note, um, to start off that, um, you know, it certainly seems like the applicant's been very responsive and, and uh, definitely heading in the right direction. Um, some, of the, some of the changes in responses, as, I, as far as I understand, are actually reflected in uh, materials that were just delivered to, the, to staff, I think, this morning. So um, is that, is that correct, correct Jamel? I don't want to misstate that. So, um, I do want to say, and we'll see where board discussion goes, that, you know, given that, and it's, you know, that obviously doesn't give staff or the board time to sort of review and digest those materials, um, that, you know, we may not be quite ready tonight for an approval, but that said, we'll see where discussion goes, and maybe it ends up to where if it's teed up for, if not a consent item for the next agenda, at least it's... Um, much closer and um, would be a better position to to be in a position for approval next time. But um, I just wanted to put that out there, given you know, given the the lead times and turnaround times on reviewing materials and so forth. But it does sound like the applicant's been very responsive. So with that, I'll defer my further any further comments until uh, everyone else has had a chance to to speak. Uh, Robin, do you yeah, want to sure. start off? Um, I'd like to uh, applaud the applicant for for really um, finding the silver lining in the situation, both architecturally and, and site, just site layout. And um, I also applaud you for doing some innovative underground stormwater management. Um, and um, I guess, can you just point me to where the stormwater outfall is? I mean, am I looking at the right place? You know, because I'm hearing that it's going directly into the river, <coughs> but I don't know. Can you just point me to where the outfall is, That where you're going to put the level lip spreader? Sure. Jim. So the level, level spreader is actually, it's actually uh, okay. right here, and that yep. actually is just directing stormwater that comes off site mm -hmm. to the site. The actual outfall for the, the detention is into the street, which then connects into, uh, I think it connects to a, a catch basin there. Okay, the common line in the street. Yeah. Okay. So, um, 
Yeah, the, the level spreader we're talking about is actually is just collecting and, and diverting flow. Can you just speak into the microphone because I have a couple other questions. I'm sorry about that. No, you're fine. Um, uh, I this is more. Um, it, it's it's not. I guess the other question or sort of comment that I'll have for you all as we move forward, um, it was sort of alluded to in staff comments, which is uh, thinking about flooding in this area. And I, I and I really appreciate sort of the in depth. Uh, overview that you gave us about how the system will work and I, I just want to have assurances that we're treating both run on from the system from um, let's see where it says uh, consider okay number five in our stormwater management ordinance for site plan it does say that drainage system shall, shall be designed so as to not impact streets adjacent properties downstream properties and local soils and vegetation. The system shall also consider and incorporate the uh, upstream runoff. So what I'm hearing is run on what you would be uh, that may pass over the site. So can you just comment yep. on that yep. if you are yep. incorporating so, that? So the, uh, we're, we're, we're basically any flow from off site, we're trying to divert around our site. Oh. Um, that's what the French drain will do. Okay. It'll take flow from the adjacent site, divert it around. And then we also are providing those, um, those. So you're not attenuating it at all. No, we're not. We're not. We're not adding extra attenuation to any offsite flows. But okay. anything from the new development, that's okay. All of that will be detained. And, I'm going to just ask slow. you to work with staff on that because then if you go to section G, it does say that adequate provision shall be made for the control, collection, and disposal of all stormwater runoff from the site itself. And these plans shall be designed to complement the hydrology and the natural features of the site and shall not cause adverse impacts to abutters, downstream properties, or receiving waters. So what I'm getting at here is that um, in this area, we've had significant amount of outcry from uh, residents, um, uh, abutters, about the flooding issues. And they didn't come to the planning board when they built the first development, and they didn't come to the development when they, you know, had issues for the second development. But I just want, I want you to know that you're in a very sensitive location, both from um, a natural resource perspective, but also a pl flooding perspective. So just meeting the DEP standards may not be enough in this area. So w whether it's, you know, 80% treatment or 95% treatment, I just want you to understand that staff and the board may may need you to go to these G standards and say that collection and disposal of all stormwater may need to be attenuated. Well, um, so the, I, I wasn't, I didn't do this particular design, but mm -hmm. as, as far as I know, it, um, the, the <coughs> town's regulations are to meet pre versus post total peak flow for a 25 year storm. Is that? Um, yep. Yeah, so. Um, that's I mean, the second. That's the sentence in between the first and the last one. That yeah, I read yeah. To you, so, so any any stormwater that's actually flowing, it's coming onto the site, um, you know, with the new pavement, with the new roof lines mm -hmm. and everything, that is all being detained on site and and released to meet the precondition okay. peak flows. Um, as far as off site, <laughs> you know, as far as any flows from off site, if they were sort of coming into our detention system, then we would have to design it to actually hold that. But since we're sort of diverting flow around our site, um, mm -hmm. it, it's not making anything better. It's not making anything worse. Okay. So please just, as, as I mentioned, just work with staff on that. Yep. Provide them your HydroCAD yep. so that that can be reviewed. Um, and not that it's, you know, I, it's, it, it's just very much appreciated. And please understand that it's just a highly sensitive area. Yep. Um, but I, I definitely applaud you for all the measures that you have taken proactively. Um, with respect to the um, with respect to the um, snow storage area in the northwest portion of the site there, um, I'm worried about how close you are as a, as a buffer. So are the, are the trees planted a certain distance away from the stream kind of a thing so that the snow will basically be constricted outside the buffer to the stream, correct? Yes. Okay. And so 
what I'd like to see in the long-term maintenance plan then is a way that you're going to make sure that that area, like after the snow stays there over the winter, it packs all the vegetation down. And that takes a toll on basically the form and function that that buffer mm -hmm. plays to the stream. So we'll need in your long-term maintenance plan and landscaping plan, how you plan to refresh that on an annual basis. Does that make sense? I'm looking at staff too. Does that make, make mm -hmm. sense? Cause I just, I worry about it being so close there. Yeah. Um, I love the I love the idea of the curb stops too, so that you're you're sort of encouraging the sheet flow, which is one of the best ways that you can sort of uh, be proactive with your stormwater management. So please encourage, please include the removal of the curb stops in and out every year too in the long term maintenance mm -hmm. plan, mm -hmm. because you know even though you all are here saying yep this is what we're going to do every year, it doesn't get maintained. Angela, actually, can I ask the chair? Can I ask? Uh, I guess to follow up with sure. Robbins, I think it's something that the board might want to talk about is the curb stops because looking at how this is graded and how this drainage works, yeah. um, it actually all the paved surfaces drain within mm. and then they slope off pretty steep. Oh, okay. So what happens is it slopes off and then gets collected into a point source. So it gets into a pipe and then it becomes a one point source rather than draining sheeting. It does not oh. sheet. It goes, so it's collected okay. from the the runoff above the site okay. into a pipe as well as off that side slope into the pipe. Oh, so that's where okay. uh, I think staff was suggesting curb line okay. you could do um, without interfering with drainage right. in that, that back corner okay. and along the back side. Mm -hmm. um, so it'd be a matter of, like you said, for winter maintenance, how is a curb stop going to hold up? It'd yep. be worth a conversation if you guys are comfortable with the curb stop or if the curb line is something you want to request um, mm -hmm. just because I don't think it interferes with the drainage. It's more well, of and you raise a good point too, Angela, in that the curb stop can also um, be a line of defense for, say, vehicle fluids that spill or something like that for sheeting off kind of a thing. So I could see the plus or the minus, but I, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want to um, uh, dictate the means and methods kind of a thing, but I think Angela does bring up good points to, to raise because I, I was looking at it as a sheet flow sort of scenario. So thank you for correcting me. I appreciate it. Um, I'm not, and, and I guess I'd have to take a, I'll, I'll have to take a closer look at it when it comes back to us regarding sort of the drainage and things like that. But, but just have an, have, have an idea that we're going to be fairly, um, I think we need to be fairly rigorous with respect to section G in the site plan as far as, you know, looking at very creatively at the town standards in addition to the DEP requirements and standards. I, I'm pretty sure that that's all that I have for now. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Rachel? Yeah, um, this, is, this has come a long way and I, I think we're, we're almost there. Uh, so what we're down to now is perhaps some of the little picky things that, that we mm -hmm. see or, or that I see. And I, I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, you said that the deck in the back is going to be open beneath, correct? And what's going to be underneath the deck? What sort of fill, grass, mulch? That's an excellent question. I would have to, awesome. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Um, that's a good question. We'd have to develop that further. Something natural. Okay, and because I'm also looking at the picture of the deck walk on the side, which uh, is not covered, actually sections of the deck are not covered, so in the rain, the water's going to go down and through the deck, and it's going to end up caught underneath, uh, or pooling underneath, so you need to really think about how that's going to, how that decking is going to work uh, in the rain. Excellent point. It would be graded properly. Anything that comes through is going to grade out. Um, the other, another question that's kind of similar is you also have steps going down in between the farmhouse office uh, and the restaurant going down to the back, uh, and they're kind of steps to no place. What, what's the purpose of those stairs, uh, and what's to stop people off the deck from walking down walking along the stairs, finding their way down to the rail fence and wandering around. Is that actually a planned purpose or are you going to, 
just have stairs to no place. No, that's a very good point. The stairs are actually more intended for the staff who are, who'd be utilizing the farmhouse, and they would hopefully not have to rely on gates, but at least signage. So no, the intention is not to have uh, restaurant patrons uh, walking the property uh, like that. So so that, that goes to one of the issues that, that was raised, that there really needs to be a clear distinction mm -hmm. between the office and, and the restaurant area. And then that raises the other question or another question of the garden that you're showing in between the um, office and the restaurant and what's going in that garden. We have clients who uh, feel very strongly that that garden could be something beautiful for all to see. So they have, I don't know exactly what the details of it are, but they're very excited about having something there. Uh, perhaps something comes back to us that does a little explanation of what that's going to be. Because it really is, um, it's, it's integral to the landscaping. Uh, and I could see that it could, it could indeed be a re very restful place. Correct. Um, but I think we need a little detail there. Okay. The, um, let's see, what else did I have? Oh, I, I love the, the way you've kept the integrity of the farmhouse. Uh, and the New England vernacular, as we're calling it. Uh, it's a New England farmhouse, and you've kept that, and that's what people see when they first come in. Uh, and then to the restaurant, so I think there's a, a harmony of all three segments, from the farmhouse to the restaurant to the barn. So I, I compliment you on, on the work that's done there. Um, I have a question you said to the west uh, on the on the western side of the stream near the abutters. Um, we did get a letter from one of the abutters that had uh, uh, concern about the headlights uh, from the restaurant or from s cars coming <coughs> into the parking space. Um, and what is, you said that, that was, there was plantings in there. Could you be more descriptive? Because they, they, there is, from the abutter, there was a request that we consider uh, talking to you about a privacy fence. Between the, the, the nearest area of the headlight wash, and that I don't know who the abutter is, but uh, in the nearest um, uh, building that you actually see on the plan is the abutter, uh, that's well over 100 feet. And you can see where the, the stream is on 25 feet on either side of that stream has been, and we've probably all seen it, but it's been very heavily planted, revegetated. With what? With all native species. Uh, trees, bushes, shrubs, grasses, pretty much every, this is where the DEP got involved and said, mm -hmm. okay, you've denuded the site, now let's plant it, and here's the planting plan. And so everything there passed muster for its native vegetation for what's gonna end up growing up in a variety of anything from 40 foot tall trees given a decade or more in the future. Could, uh, could, you, in, could you include that on your landscaping plan? That's already in there. Um, right now, all I'm seeing is a blank area. Um, okay, this whole section, I mean, yes, we can do that, but yes, we can do that. Okay, because uh, it would be helpful, um, both for us, since it's just simply blank. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think for the abutter to be clear that uh, there is going to be uh, growth in screening, because I do remember uh, when this first came up and the abutters came, uh, and the owner indicated a willingness to work with them to ensure that there was um, proper landscaping, or some sort of screening, mm -hmm. ultimately, uh, that was going to um, it's going to prevent them from getting that, that headlight wash. Now, I know the, where the moose is, the moose building is, uh, they've got a privacy fence, and I'm not concerned about that. But we do have at least one abutter where there is a potential for headlights from the uh, parking spaces uh, to the back of the barn from washing over, from the, the headlights going over there to their property. But if you have good... Um, with landscaping, then I'm comfortable with the split rail. We can certainly show that for you. Thank you. And we did share a copy of that email uh, with, with your, your okay. colleagues. So uh, that's great. Thank you. 
And I think that's it. As I said, we're down to some small details. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Rick? Um, I have a follow-up to Rachel's. Um, I missed something. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. I missed something. Can you tell, show me where Spring Street is? Is that Spring Street to the left of the development? Yes. Okay. And you're going to provide the vegetation plan through there. Are they evergreens or are they, you know, are they vegetation that's going to lose its leaves in its winter and basically be sticks? No, it, it's a combination of both, and it's already been planted. It was planted almost two years ago. That's wonderful. Um, is it going to be sticks, or is it going to be something that headlights aren't going to go through? No, there's a variety of both. I mean, we wanted to put some deciduous trees in there because they typically grow taller, um, and then there's coniferous trees as well, and then there's a low bush as well, which is pretty much okay. only about eight months out of the year at best. Um, so during the winter time, there is some coniferous trees in there, but a lot of it is denuded. Um, but it is you know, well over 100 feet between that as well. And those plantings It's 100 are, feet from the edge of the parking lot to the house? Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. You take a look at the buffer, just to give you an idea. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I mean, I have a, I'm all for development, and, and I think it's wonderful what you're doing, and I really like the, what you've done with the architecture. And, and uh, I can see myself frequenting this establishment on a regular basis. But I'm always concerned about the folks that were were uh, were there first, and, and not to say that that should inhibit you from doing what, what you want as long as you follow the rules, but it, it is always a concern to me. So I, I will actually probably, I drive by there every day anyway, I could just pull in the parking lot or, or go over to Spring Street and take a look, but that's going to be one of the things that I'm going to ask you about again okay. when you come back. Okay. So. I want you to be able to do what you want with your with your lot, and I think this restaurant's going to be great, and and it, you're doing a good job of following all the all the rules and um, regulations. But if it's a simple fix, you know it's not even worth us the time. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Okay. And then the other only thing I had was the can you can we? I know you're looking for a waiver for that 25 feet, and I'm probably fine with that, but. I can't tell, and I should know, because like I said, I drive through there all the time. What is that driveway, what is that establishment next door that you're within 25 feet of the driveway? It's Creative Imaging, I believe is the name of the company, and uh, they are... Um, it's a graphic arts yes, type place? exactly. That's where they distribute most of their materials. Okay. Quick comment. I know, I know the last time it was... Please come on up, please. Thanks. I know two years ago when we came back, when we came first with the project, we had looked extensively at, at, at a single entrance and our entrance would be off of, off of that. We would close the second one, but they, they refused to let us share an access. So that was the reason we had to create a second one here. Yeah. Okay. Well, we haven't, as a board, we haven't heard any, uh, at least I haven't got any uh, information from them. So um, again, I don't have an issue as well, uh, myself with the 25 feet, as long as it's okay with the town engineer. Um, and I think that's really all I have. Other than that, I would like to say that the architecture, I think, is very well done. That's all I have. Thanks, sir. Nick? Okay. Um, colleagues did a wonderful job of covering most of these items. I'll do quick, two quick comments, though, on the... Um, Back deck area. Do you intend to have any lighting back there for evening dining? Some wall mounted lights or sconces, if you would. Um, and would they impact your lighting sheet? Um, it, well, it wouldn't impact the lighting sheet because we're so far from the uh, actual edge of the property on that side uh, from the lighting plan. Mm -hmm. um, I believe there are some uh, wall mounted lights. I don't think there's any, the deck's pretty narrow. Um, but uh, so uh, there are some wall mounted lights just for safety, but I don't think there's any uh, uh, individual um, separate lighting that's out there. You don't there. see it altering the sheet that we have here, the lighting plan that we have. You don't see it impacting the, the wall mount. No. Okay. If we were 20 feet away, it would be a different story, but we're considerably further away than that. Okay. And then, um, oh boy, there was only two and I lost half of it. Um, Oh, I wanted 
to address the uh, parking, there was a question uh, whether or not there was enough spaces. And um, the, you have exactly as much as prescribed by the zoning ordinance. Or mm -hmm. the ordinance. So, um, which is good. Um, I wish you as much success as those other locations that have been mentioned that currently have parking problems. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it, it will be a recurring theme here in Scarborough. Um, because this is a great place to live, to play, to you know, go out, eat, and, and have some fun. Um, you know, I just as a general public comment, not related to your application at all. I would like to see, um, you know, somewhere down the line, it filter over to a, a wider discussion about planning for success, which you know we hope you have it, and you know, being ready as a town to, to you know incorporate success, so we don't get into parking. Um, again, always be mindful of our chairman's uh, <laughs> worry that we're going to pave over most of Scarborough, um, <laughs> which, you know, in some instances, we probably have too much parking in some areas. So, um, just just food for thought. But I did want to address at least the comment from the public uh, whether or not there was enough spaces here. So that's it. Thanks, Roger. Sure. Um, I don't really have uh, much to add. Uh, I think everybody else has covered everything quite nicely. I, I do want to comment on the architecture. I think it looks terrific. I'm very eager to see something actually happen there. Um, do, uh, I would ask you to um, take a look at the the email that we received <coughs> regarding the uh, the abutter there. Um, that's the only concern I really have to add is um, you know if you can uh, come up with some. Uh, low evergreen type things, plantings to, um, you know, complement the rail fence. Take a look, just take a look at that and see, because I know, I know there's plantings out there now that that's been restored, but when I drive by there, it still seems very sparse up there, and I know it's going to take a while for that to really develop, so in the meantime, I ask you just to take a look at that. At one section. I'm not saying all along the rail fence, just just that portion between mm -hmm. the parking lot and the abutters. Okay. That's all. Thanks. Uh, yeah, as one of the privileges of being chair is a lot of the good points get made before it gets to you. But uh, And I agree with most of what, uh, pretty much everything that my colleagues have said, um, you know, starting with commending you for, for all the work you've done on this with, with the architecture and the site planning and I think we're all cognizant of the fact that this engineering team sort of inherited some of these some of these issues, and and uh, you've sort of been kind of uh, cleaning cleaning things up, and we greatly appreciate that, and realize it's been a you know it's kind of reopened various cans of worms that you've had to work through, and appreciate the um, the elements that already incorporated into your stormwater planning and and uh, the site planning, and certainly the architecture. Um, it sounds like there are some things to just sort of. Uh, confirm and follow through on with staff and others um, in terms of stormwater, as has been noted. Uh, there was also a note, and we appreciate your your response on the the, the auto turn simulation with the fire department. I would, I guess, I would list that as one other um, thing to kind of button up, just to kind of close the loop on, so to speak, uh, to make sure that um, the fire department is is fully kind of signing off on that. Um, on that latest uh, run, um, I appreciate uh, Nick's comments on on parking, and and yes, I have definitely been a pretty consistent voice on not wanting to um, overdo it on parking. We have a lot of a, a lot of over parking in town, particularly with some of the more kind of retail big box type uh, type areas. Um, it is true though that we have had some challenges more recently with with restaurants, and it's been a in some ways a great problem to have that we're finally getting some restaurants and bars and places like that and this would be sounds like sounds like another great addition to that um, but uh, as uh, Nick noted you're meeting the the under the zoning would require 61 spaces you're, you're showing 61 and that's and that's great um, and maybe that is something for the town more broadly to look at going forward for these, these certain types of high intensity uses where there are times when, when there can be overflow. Um, obviously, things like snow removal become cr especially critical um, 
during the winter months with things like that. Um, so again, um, as, as was noted, there were some materials that I know were, were provided to staff this morning and, and we're seeing some things for the first time. It all looks like it's heading in the right direction and um, uh, I'm fully confident that you'll be in a good place for, for next time. And um, is there any, uh, any additional feedback that you'd appreciate from us at this point to enable you to finish your homework um, for next time? Not so much, no, thank you, Corey. Right. Um, not so much feedback as it is uh, just a, a general comment as well. Um, you're obviously entitled to ask for anything and we will give you whatever you ask for. Some of the things that we did not include in the packets were those that were supplied last time. And to the extent that we supplied them last time, if they didn't change, we didn't put them back in this time. That's fair. It's um, just one of those examples, for instance, is the, um, uh, the, the French drain that's on the, the right side of the property. Mm -hmm. We don't have to put it there. That's actually dealing with some of the overflow from the abutting property um, mm -hmm. that would otherwise come and onto a very small section of our property. And rather than just leave it there, we designed the French drain system to be able to, to grab that and then put it into the... Uh, uh, the stormwater system, uh, which direct, flows directly into the stream. Um, so there are a few, and then the hydrocad matter, uh, matter for instance, because of the cutting on this, um, the, and then the revegetation and the uh, redoing the site, it's actually slightly smaller than it was last time, the, the um, impervious surface area. So the hydrocad matter, which we kept the same, um, is actually, it's in a positive direction. We've gone in a positive direction. We can certainly supply that to you. That's not the issue. But when we decrease something that was already reviewed and approved, we just didn't think that that would be germane for uh, to take a look at it all over again when we already looked at it once. But we can certainly do that if you wish. Okay. And we and will I'll, do that. And I, you know, I'll certainly defer to staff on on uh, you know what what uh, seems most appropriate to to include based on based on their own review and comments and based on board comments. And if, going forward, if any individual board members have you know specific items that they would like to see or would like a refresher on, I encourage you to contact staff and they can they can presumably provide it. No, everything here we got this evening is absolutely fine. Okay. We'll, we'll, okay. Whatever you want, we'll have, be happy to give to you. Great. Well, look forward to uh, seeing it come to fruition. One more question, Corey, if I may. Um, as far as the waiver is concerned, I know we got one, mm -hmm. okay, makes sense, actually two comments toward that end. Um, do I presume correctly that, uh, and this is not a voting situation, obviously, but uh, are there any issues as far as that waiver is concerned? Uh, and we can discuss that further next time when we're here, too. I just wanted to make sure that there was nothing Not as far as I'm concerned, and I, I know a couple of folks did specifically okay. mention that. I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in at this point. If there's anything. No? Okay. okay. Then we're good. All right. Thanks Thank very much. Thank you very much. Good luck. As previously noted, item number 10, Infinity Credit Union, was tabled at the request of the applicant, so presumably that will be coming back next time. Uh, number 11, staff report. All right. Well, it's not 11, so I have quite a few things to say, <laughs> and hopefully they'll make sense <laughs> this time. That doesn't, doesn't mean you need to stretch it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be quick. I'll be brief. As brief as I can be. Um, I'll just sort of go down a list here. Um, we did... Uh, provide the resubmission for the Scarborough Downs uh, master plan for phase two uh, to the board members tonight. Just a reminder that that meeting is being held, or workshops being held uh, Tuesday, December 18th at 7 p.m. Uh, to review those plans. Thank you for your attendance there for additional meeting. Uh, we do have a few mylar, mylars um, to sign tonight. Uh, those are the Scarborough Downs uh, phase one subdivision plans. Uh, the applicant provided those to staff today, so please sign those before you go. Um, on Thursday night, uh, December 13th at 6 p.m., there, there will be a public meeting uh, to discuss the Route 1 uh, corridor study that Scarborough's uh, working with SACO on. It's a access management, bike ped, uh, complete streets, uh, overall look at the Route 1 corridor. Um, so the first meeting public meeting is Thursday night, and that's just a meeting to solicit public input on the plan, and um, we hope to see a lot of folks there for that. Um, 
The Piper Shores Dorado project, uh, site walk, I've heard from four board members that they can't attend. Um, the site walk on January 12th at 8 a.m. It is a Saturday. Um, so if you can't attend, please do let me know uh, so we can reschedule that. But I think it'd be good to get that on the book. So I appreciate you guys replying. A few more. Um, on January 9th, between 6 and 7, uh, the council has requested a joint workshop uh, with the planning board on the Piper Shores contract zone amendment project. Uh, so the, the council is seeking uh, board attendance. There are more details to come from staff. I just wanted to sort of get that on uh, your calendars um, if you can make it. We do have three applications to fill in vacant spots uh, for the planning board for uh, starting next calendar year. Uh, there's two vacant spots with Corey's departure after tonight, um, so their staff's pretty excited with that we have three uh, applications for two spots. Just want to let you guys know. In January, we will, the board will be electing new officers. Um, so start to think about, start to think about that um, over your holiday break. <laughs> and just as a reminder, the next board meeting is on January 14th, 2019. And I just wanted to thank Corey for all of his hard work to this board. I know I've only been here for 14 months, but you've certainly made my job easier. So thank you for your leadership. Mm -hmm. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Same to you. I don't know if Angela has any staff report. I think you covered everything imaginable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, what time is that January 19th? Uh, I think it's to be determined, but sometime between 6 and 7 p.m. Okay. Still working out the details. Um, on the... Um, Site walk at Piper Shores. Mm -hmm. uh, is that gonna, are they going to have balloons there? They are. They're going to fly the balloons um, okay. at the approx at the height of the Commons building, which is that four, four or five story sort of mixed use building that we talked about last time. Okay, good. Yep. That'll bring back memories for you, right? Were you, were you on the board when they did Piper Shores? No, I was oh, not. That was the original one. Oh, you no. can come. I haven't been around you that. You want to come on the way? No. Like <laughs> if I happen to drive by on Sunday, I'll take a look. Um, no administrative amendments, nope. correct? Not this time. Right. Any planning board correspondence? Okay. Planning board comments? I have one. Um, actually, it's another request. Well, first, the comment. I'd like to thank um, Doreen for doing a really great job updating our zoning notebooks. That's really great. And second, thank you so much, Corey, for your service. And the third is a request to think about going to electronic calendar invitations because um, I don't know how many of us use their e-calendar, but if we could send out, I mean, that's like six things, and I just looked at my calendar. I only have two of the six on my calendar. So if we could um, send them out to everyone, that would be really great. I would appreciate it. Thank you all. all right. You think like Outlook invites? Yeah. Yeah, or that Google. actually would be really helpful. Yeah, awesome. That's a great idea. Yeah. Happy to do that. If, it's, if it works. Thank you. Because, uh, and I, I need to give you a different email address too. Um, we can talk about that later. You don't want to give out your email address right now? Yeah, yeah. I'll give it out to home. <laughs> and my social security in time. <laughs> <laughs> I got life lock. I'm not working. And a credit card. <laughs> Is it still AOL.com? <laughs> Um, any other planning board comment? Nick, just uh, publicly just say thank you for everything that you've done as a chairman, as a board member, as a leader. Um, this community should be really proud to have had you here, still have you here, um, just in a changing capacity. But uh, you, you're going to be missed. And okay. I think uh, everyone at home, for those that have just caught on to watching this great board that we have here, uh, Corey's, the, Corey's the reason we get a lot. Um, a lot of our stuff done professionally. Um, and I, I think you've helped. Uh, I think you've helped this town tremendously. And it's uh, big shoes to fill. Really appreciate it, and wish you the best of luck. Mm -hmm. I second that. Yeah, I, I, I would like to echo All that favor? as well. Um, All in favor. All in favor. You know, I, I do. I do appreciate. As a citizen, I appreciate your effort that you put in all these years. And uh, how many more years can you serve on the long range planning? Uh don't remember off the top of my head. It's a little, it's a little different. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it's, 
I think it's really appreciated yeah. because um, it's, it's good to get citizens involved in, in a very constructive way, which you have, so I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I, I've, uh, I've appreciated having this opportunity, and uh, uh, it's been a great way to stay engaged and have a voice in the town and uh, be kind of a conduit for things, and I've had the privilege of being able to work with a lot of different great board members from a lot of different perspectives, and um, you know, Jamel said it made his job easier. Certainly, I want to give another big nod to staff for making my job and every board member's job uh, easier. Uh, and having been on both sides of the podium, so to speak, as I think some others have as well in different jurisdictions, I, I can honestly say that um, the, the staff here, the planning staff and the town staff in general, are um, definitely definitely a cut above and, and really help to set a very professional tone and make sure that we're all prepared and um, I think, you know, give, just adds that much more credibility to, to the whole process and hopefully for the general public as well. Um, I will be continuing to, uh, to serve with the Long Range Planning Committee, at least that's my, that's my intent going forward and I'll definitely be uh, following things and I'm sure Good hands and look forward to seeing how things go. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, one other quick note um, Jamel mentioned the Route 1 study in the meeting. I encourage anyone on the board or neighbors, anyone paying attention, there's also a, a, a survey which I think is still up that folks can, can complete um, fairly quick and painless. I think as with the comp plan process and, and other things, the more input, mm -hmm. uh, the better. So, all right. With that, I'll move to adjourn. Second. 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 Third. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the last gavel pound. Oh. <laughs>